because I learned most people, they, they can learn better from a visual perspective, right? Not only if I'm talking about credit, but if they see it and I'm talking about credit, right? So it's a better, you know, just to give everybody a better understanding. But how's everybody doing out there? Shout out to Tiger for having me on today, Notary Room. Salute, I'm a salute. big fan of the Notary Room. If I'm looking to the camera, well, yeah, here we go. So I'm a big fan of the Notary Room. I always want to get in. I tune in every time we have one. So just a pleasure to be here. Appreciate it, bro. So what, so what, what do we, okay. So you, you've seen a couple of notary room uh, episodes, right? We're in season two. You're actually the first person that's bringing in this whole credit um, side of things. So you're the, I, I'm, I'm just honored to have you here because you are the first person that's bringing the credit side. Yeah. And um, we have notaries on here that do real estate and they want to get like maybe one of these big $500 printers, right? Mm -hmm. And it's like, damn, I don't want to take the little funds that I have that I'm making with the notarizations to do that. So I was just saying like you teaching credit, business credit is going to help them expand their company so much more. So go ahead, man. The floor is yours, brother. Let's go. And, and to add to that, absolutely. I think one of the biggest mistakes that small business owner makes or just business owner in general is using cash for everything, right? Because essentially there's three ways you can start a business. You can start off with cash. You can start off with equity, meaning you give someone uh, shares of your company in return, they give you funds, right? They give you capital. Or you can start off with uh, just debt, using debt, leveraging the bank's money. So today we're going to talk about um, leveraging debt, using debt to actually make us money. So, um, so here, here's what, have you guys ever seen, uh, that Eddie Murphy movie, uh, vampire in Brooklyn, right? <laughs> I'm sure most of you guys seen that movie, you know, Tiger, he's from, uh, Brooklyn. So he's probably, Brooklyn. you know, I'm sure. He <laughs> but that's one of my favorite movies. And remember when the preacher was on, well, Eddie Murphy, he transformed to that preacher. And he was telling everybody, evil, evil, evil is good. And by the end of the day, or by the end of that scene, everybody in a whole church were chanting, evil is good, evil mm -hmm. is good, right? So that's something, that's a concept that I'm about to uh, give to you guys by saying debt is good, right? Mm. Debt is actually good. So, because I'm sure most of your life, people have told you, oh man, don't get that credit card, debt is bad, or get that credit card, only use it for gas only use it for groceries, spend $20 here, spend $20 there, right? That's the old concept, right? That big mama taught us that, you know, your great grandma taught you, whatever, right? We don't live by that notion or that concept anymore, right? That's that's your t the traditional route and the conventional route. We want to go by a different concept and it's called create money to make money. So let me just write that down mm. on the board real quick. Create money to make money. Right. That's what we want to live by, because this is a simple concept, meaning and I'm going to break it down in one second. Uh, what I mean by it, it's a simple concept. We're going to create money, meaning we're not going to do the old traditional way, um, such as work a nine to five job, save our way up. And hopefully we get a gold watch. We get a retirement at the end of the day. Right. We're not going to do that anymore. Right. It, right now, especially during this pandemic, even before the pandemic, we live in a new world, we live in a new economy, and we live in a new marketplace, right? It's, re, it's evolved, it's changing, so we have mm -hmm. to adapt with it. We can't live by the old notion. And I'm sure most of you, most of you that's on here, you understand this. That's why you're doing no other reason, because you don't want to continue working your nine to five job. Now, listen, I want to add something before I get into it. I'm not anti nine to five. I'm just a firm believer of leveraging your nine to five to invest into assets. You don't necessarily have to be an entrepreneur to invest in assets. I think that's where most people uh, get that confused. Oh, I don't want to be an entrepreneur. Okay, that's fine. But that's, that's no excuse on why you shouldn't invest into some type of asset. Maybe you can have a small hustle on the side. Maybe you can um, invest in rental property, do a flip here and there, uh, invest in the stock market, right? It doesn't take an entrepreneur to do that thing. So, and that's it, you're just being lazy. So just throw that out there. All right, so let's break this down. Create money to make money. What do I mean by that concept? So I want to break down the old formula versus the new formula. So let's start with the old formula. Most of you guys are probably familiar with this because I know I once worked a nine to five job. I used to work at a casino. 
And I used to work at casino industry for five years, right? I used to do this popular game that all the Asians used to go in there. They used to play Baccarat, right? How many of you ever been to the casino? You gamble, right? It was, it was Blackjack, uh, Russian, whatever Roulette you guys dude. play, right? <laughs> Russian Roulette. I everybody, everybody gambled before. Well, I don't gamble anymore because, you know, mindset you, is different. You know, right? you know the tricks in the game of a casino. <laughs> that's why. <laughs> exactly. Look. In the casino industry, the house is always going to win. The longer you play, the house is always going to win. But I digress. Let me get back on subject. So here's the reality of it. I used to work in the casino industry. That was my nine to five job. And let me just tell you this quick story. So when I was um, dealing Baccarat game, right? It's an Asian game, predominantly Asian game. Um, it's a real popular game. I had this high roller. He was playing about $10,000 a hand, right? So I'm dealing to him and my birthday was coming up. So at the time I was turning... 25. And I was like, oh man, we about to go downtown. We about to go to the W hotel. We about to turn up. We about to pop bottles. So I'm bragging. And to my left, um, I had this high roller. Again, he was paying about $10,000 a hand. He, he's listening to the conversation. He like, uh, how old are you turning? Alone? I said, 25. He said, okay, that's cool. That's cool. Then he said, um, let me tell you something. He said, you know the difference between your culture and my culture? And I'm like, no, nah, what is it? He said, well, let me ask you this. On your 25th birthday, um, what are you doing? I said, well, I'm going downtown. You know, people buying me bottles. We stand in this fancy hotel. He's like, okay, that's cool. He's like, well, you know, when I, what happened to me when I turned 21? I'm like, nah, what's that? He said, my father gave me a gas station. So at the time, I'm like, whoa. But I was like, okay, that's cool. You got a gas station, right? Because mentally, I wasn't there yet. Right, right. You know, so I really couldn't understand what he was trying to tell me you know, think bigger, you know, uh, uh, it's, it's more than just going to a hotel and popping bottles and going on vacation. Like it's, it's, it's all about passing down assets, passing down that generational wealth, building that legacy up. His father gave him a gas station when he turned 21 years old. So that means his father put him in position, right? Before he was a full grown adult, his father left him with some type of asset. See, that's what other coaches do. That in our community and in the black community, we don't do. We don't leave our kids' assets because we so focus on us getting by right now. This nine to five, I I just want to work, get by, live my life. Cool, kids, y'all go. You know, y'all do what y'all have to do. Mm -hmm. It doesn't. It shouldn't work like that. That's not fair. We should be thinking of our children, their children, and their children. Truly building generational wealth. So now, every time I think about that story, I reflect like, man, at the time I couldn't grasp it, right? Because Mentally, I wasn't there, but now I think about it all the time. Like he was trying to tell me, hey, think legacy, think bigger. So let me just break that down. I wanted to share that story with you guys really quickly. So what do I mean by that? Same thing. So here's the old formula, right? We work our nine to five job, plus we can work some overtime, right? Plus overtime, right? That's what we know. Work nine to five. Maybe you a construction worker. Maybe you, I don't know, work at Walmart. Maybe you... Uh, Work out of gas and wherever you work at, right? That's your nine to five job. And maybe you get some overtime here and there, or maybe you even have two jobs. So you're working all day. You're not spending any time with your family. Uh, you did, you know, by the time you come to the house, so you got to repeat the whole thing over, over again. I feel like you're living that, that one time loop, right? It's no fun. So that's the reality of it. Uh, then after that, you like, you know what? I'm just going to save too. So you work your nine to five job plus overtime. Now you're like, all right, I'm going to stack up, I'm going to save, right? We love to say that, all right, I'm going to save this year. I can't wait till I get some money. You know, my taxes get back. I'm really going to save. Does that ever work? When the last time you save and it actually worked, right? Because something always comes up, right? We got kids. They need clothes. We got to buy furniture for the house. We want to get a car. Man, we want to get a car. No, you know what I mean? So something always coming up. So it's damn near impossible to say, especially right now. So we think this formula is gonna work and that's gonna equal retirement, right? We think we're gonna retire off this formula. This was the old concept, maybe your, 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 your father worked, your, your mom, your grandma, whoever, right? They live off this formula and they gotta they, you know, get their gold watch at the end. But this is no longer prevalent. Like we can no longer do this. This is not popular. Like this will not get it in this economy and this marketplace. So <clears throat> what do we do? Right. So now we want to live back to create money to make money concept. And what does that mean? Simple. 
So I like things really simple. So what we're going to do is we're going to leverage, I like to call it the bank's money, right? TBM, leverage the bank's money. That's the first thing we're going to do. And I'm going to break down this uh, in a second, what I mean by leverage the bank money, but follow me. What I mean by just using the bank's money to uh, get further ahead, it's better than this concept and this concept already. So this can take you all your lifetime just to maybe save up 10, $20,000. This, it can take you 24 hours to do this, to leverage the bank money if you are in position. And I'm going to mm. show you by the end of this, uh, by the end of this, uh, this notary room on how to get a position to do that. So what we go from here. So we're going to leverage the bank money and it's simple. We're going to invest, right? We're going to invest. We're going to make some type of investment. What do I mean by that? Well, invest in some type of asset. What asset? You can invest in a business, right? You guys are notaries. So invest in your business. Mm. What do you need for your business? Just think about it. Okay. Well, you got the bank's money. What do I need for my business? Okay. Well, I got expenses, so I need fuel, right? I got to buy pen and, uh, printing paper. I need a printer. Um, yeah. um, I need all types of supplies. I need personnel, right? I need inventory. I need to hire people to so maybe to take some phone calls. Yeah. You can do all this with capital, all right? You can do all this. You, you can buy you a new car. Anything you want, you can do with leveraging the bank's money. So that's the concept. So you want to invest in your business, uh, you know, to, to get those supplies, to get the inventory, to hire personnel, to get systems, right? We need systems in our business to make it run more efficiently. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to invest. After that, we're going to save. We're going to save money. Now, you're looking like London. You just said, don't save, right? Up here, you just said, don't save. So what do you mean, save money? Well, here's the thing. I mean, save money on your taxes, this is the biggest thing that we overlook because here's the reality of it. Small business owners, investors, they are um, self-employed, even people self-employed right now, you might be self-employed. You might be a one man show, even people who self-employed, they get the best tax breaks. Why? Cause they get the write off a lot of their expenses, depreciation, all this, you get the write off on your taxes. So if you write off on your taxes, you have more money to invest. So you're saving money at the end of the day because you're paying less in taxes. So if you make 100 grand for the year, guess what? You're probably paying 10% of that in taxes. So instead of waiting up here, saving, uh, waiting for that, uh, that, uh, that your paycheck. tax returns, mm -hmm. right? Let's say we for tax returns. Right. You got money all through the year to play with. So yep. you're saving money on taxes to reinvest. That's how the wealthy do it. That's why you see all these uh, wealthy people you know, all of a sudden, the, um, maybe in the last quarter towards November, December, they bound all these things because they, it's going to be a tax write-off. They rather spend it and make it a tax write-off as opposed to giving it to the government. So in that way, so they saving more money by not giving it to the government, by having more money to invest. So I hope that makes sense. No, and that makes that, sense. Just to add to that, yeah. if you guys ever follow Grant Cardone, he bought a $60 million jet because he did not want to pay that to the IRS in taxes. See, there you go. Absolutely. That's the same concept that we need to do. And, and, and I never heard of it. I was like, damn, so you could go and buy a, a jet or something like that and then use that as a tax write-off? And he's like, hey, it, it actually rolls over into the next following year yep. um, and absorbs some of the taxes for the next following year. It, Bro, like, like we don't know none of this stuff. I mean, like, I know I don't know none of this stuff. Yeah. I grew up in the hood, so. Little strategies like that give you a long way, though, Tiger. Like, it, it really carries weight. So, and they do it primarily in the fourth quarter. So, if you follow this concept, then instead of doing retirement, right, you're creating wealth. That's what you're doing. You're creating wealth. So, this is why we have to, uh, it's all about knowledge and information at the end of the day. Because if we don't know about this uh, formula, then it's very hard, or if we're not knowledgeable, or we don't have access to the information, then it's very hard to execute on this, right? We'll always live by this. Now, you can start here, but don't finish here. That's the biggest thing. Hmm. You can start here, but do not finish here. So that's why I want to, uh, I hope you guys understand this, uh, about this. Any questions on creating money to make money? 
Yeah, um, if you guys have questions, type it in the chat section. And then on the tail end, we're going to do the Q&A. And if you guys want to go live and ask London some questions or maybe about your personal credit or how to access some business credit, we'll go into a Q&A at the last uh, 15 minutes of the show. So let me ask you this. Um, do Does your personal credit play a role in you accessing business credit? That's a great question. And let me just go into that um, while we're on the topic. So yes, so here's the thing. There's a big distinction between business credit and business funding. So mm -hmm. business funding is totally different. So I wanna make that distinction. What okay. is business credit? So business credit is when you leverage your business. So let's say you have an LLC. So you leverage your business and you go to other companies. What do I mean by other companies? I mean, um, let's say Home Depot, Dale's, Apple, Amazon, um, any gas store card, let's say a Walmart. Um, you go to any other company and you open a line of credit with that company just by leveraging your business, right? That's business credit. So business funding is when you leverage your business and you leverage your personal credit and you go to the bank and you get the money. Mm. No business credit, I didn't say go to the bank and get the money because that's damn near impossible right now. Maybe back in 2007, 2008, before the crash, you can do that. So you can't just leverage your business. That's a, one of the big misconceptions out there that people think, oh, let me just start open my LLC and let me go to the bank and get this cash. No, you have to personal guarantee it. So I want to break that down so you guys can see it on the board, exactly mm -hmm. what I'm talking about. So I'm, I want to start with business funding because everyone on here, if you have a business, if you have a sad gear, if you have a sad hustle, if you're a self-employer, you're a small business, if you're a brand new business, you should all be getting business funding. Mm -hmm. That's a necessity, right? It's mandatory. So let me break that down so you guys can have a better understanding. All right. So let's start with first thing I said, first thing you got to do is get a business, right? First thing we want to do is get a business. Now, this business can be an LLC, which I recommend. It can be an S Corp, right? No sole proprietary. We want to have a, 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 a separate entity. I'm not going to go over different entities, et cetera, right? But you want to make sure it's a separate entity. So first thing you want to do is start your business. Now, again, this could be a one-year-old business. It could be a one-day-year-old business. It doesn't matter. It can be a 10-year-old business. So just start the business. Get it done. So let's say this is a brand new business. Now, next thing we have to do, remember, I said a business, then I said leverage your what? Personal credit. Mm -hmm. So we want to make sure our personal credit is in position. Now, most of you are like, oh, man, my personal credit, you know, I'm going to deal with my personal credit. Yes. Look, here's the reality of it. You can't do anything without credit. I'm going to tell you guys right now. So if you're trying to go around credit, you're trying to go underneath it, if you're trying to go above it, it's impossible to get around credit, right? Just think about it. If you want to rent, you need credit. If even your job, I had a lady um, almost a year now, she came to me like really stressed out. She wanted to get hired at US Bank. And she was like, London, I really need your help. And at the time, I was only doing it as a sad hustle. So she was like, London, I really need your help. The bank just, they, they won't hire me because my credit is not in position. You know, my credit is really bad. So meaning she had all the skill sets. She had all the credentials. She had the personality. She had the experience. But one major thing that she didn't have was her credit. And the banks, well, I know U.S. Bank, they check your credit. So if mm -hmm. you go on any higher tier job or anything, they check your credit. So yeah. I say that to say this. Credit it affects your where you want to live at, uh, what area you want to live at, your school district, your job, your business, everything, right? Your home, whatever, you, real estate, whatever you want to do, you have to leverage your credit at the end of the day. So we're not going to get around this. We're going to deal with it. Yeah. That's what we're going to do. We're going to deal with it. So, and it's easy. All credit can be restored, repaired, and rebuilt. I want you guys to understand that. All credit can be restored, repaired, and rebuilt. So we're outside of bankruptcy, right? That's not a subject. So <laughs> let's, get, let's get back to it. So what are we going to do? We got our business and we got our personal credit in position. So 
we're going to get business credit cards. And we're also going to get business lines of credit. Lines of credit, right? So we're, we're going to do that just by leveraging our business and our personal. And here's the great thing about it. Let's say we get 50K combined business credit and business lines of credit. Let me explain these two. Business credit card. What do I mean by that? Okay, so personal, you understand personal credit cards. But with business credit cards, you get 0% interest for 12 to 24 months. You also, it doesn't report on your personal credit. Why mm. is that so important? It's important because if you know how personal credit works, if you don't, I'm about to tell you really quickly how personal credit works. Credit utilization takes up, makes up 30% of your credit profile. So that three-digit number, that FICO score, 30% of that is cons uh, consists of credit utilization. What is credit utilization? Well, say if you got a $1,000 credit card, and on that $1,000 credit card, you spend $800. So you spend $800, so meaning you had an 80% uh, um, credit usage, credit utilization, 80%. What does that mean? That means your credit score is going to drop significantly because mm -hmm. you overspent on that credit card, right? So that's the one of the most, well, the second most important thing when it comes to that FICO score, that credit utilization. But your business credit do not report on your personal credit, meaning it reports on your business credit. So this 50K, you can max that card out and won't get penalized. You nice. won't be paying no interest and it won't show up on your personal credit. That's the great thing about it. So, and I'm gonna get to that more in a second. Business lines of credit, you need more, a little bit more established, right? You can't have a brand new business two years or older, you know, but this is the gold mine right here. You can get $50,000 just straight off business credit by itself. And on lines of credit, maybe your business is two years older, you got some documentation, then you can get the business line of credit. But let's say you get this. What's next? Okay, so what are we going to do next? Well, we're going to turn this credit into cash. Credit to cash. That's the name of the game. Right, we're gonna liquidate these credit cards just like you have your personal credit cards. There's so many ways you can liquidate a credit card. You can do uh, merchant accounts, you can do balance transfers, you can do balance transfer check. I mean, you can do so many ways to liquidate those credit cards. But we're gonna liquidate the credit cards and we're gonna turn that to cash. Why do we wanna do that? Again, it's all about investing, making an investment, investing to some type of asset that's gonna produce us cash flow. So after that, we're gonna invest in, we're gonna make the investment. All right, we're going to make the investment. You guys can invest in your notary business because now you got the cash to do it. So you can invest in your notary business. Uh, you can do get all the supplies you want. You can, uh, anything you need, you can hire people to take care of phone calls or you can hire people to build your website. I mean, you can do all these things because now you have capital. Now you have capital to do it. So that's really important. From there, we're going to make that investment to get the cash flow. Why is the cash flow is important? Why do we want cash flow? The main reason why we want cash flow, because we, as, as business owners, as investors, we always looking for one thing. Your ROI, your return on your investment. Because at the end of the day, that's what every business owner, every investor look for. Because the reality is you want to make more money than you're making somewhere else. Prime mm -hmm. example, your bank account. Your bank account is only giving you 0.1%, right? If you have your money in your bank account. A CD, let's say you go on a CD. A CD is giving you 2% return on your investment. Now, let's say you up, the, you up your ante. You go to your 401k. If your 401k is giving you what? 4 or 5% return on your investment. Roth IRA, et cetera, right? Even if you match it, all that. So you invest in some type of real estate, real estate can give you 10% return, 15%, 20%. Same thing with your business. You can get a 20% return on your investment on your business, right? So this is why we look for the ROI, right? We look for this ROI because we want a cash flow and we want to make sure we got a high return on our investment, ROI. Now, let me get back to this business credit really quickly. Now, I know most of you guys, oh, you said business, um, business and personal credit, but what else do we need? Because I can recall back when I was uh, when I first started my limousine business, it was very, very difficult 
for me to get uh, any type of loan. And here's why. They wanted my bank statements. They wanted my tax returns. They wanted uh, uh, my credit. They wanted uh, proof of income. Also, they wanted my blood type. They wanted my firstborn blood type. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. But they wanted everything, right? Everything under the sun. They wanted to make sure that I can get this loan. Now, here's the thing. What if I told you you can get this $50,000 with no paycheck stubs, right? No proof of income. So no paycheck. You can get this with no um, bank statement. You can get this money without no p &L statement, profit and loss statement. You can, get, you can obtain this money without no business plan. Mm. Do you know how hard it was for me to write a business plan? It took me two and a half months to do a business plan. I did mm. it with SBA. I had to let my smart cousin, because they were smart, read it over, you know, because the banks wanted a business plan. It was horrible. Like, I never wished out on anybody else. So, no, we don't need any of this to get to get this money right here. Right? You don't have, so it's called stated income. So, Tiger, if you said you made $100,000, that's what, that's, what, that's what you put down on paper. That's what the bank is going to say you made, $100,000. They're going off your word. If you say you and your, your wife, Plus, you know, y'all made 200 combined. That's what you're going up off, right? mm -hmm. off of. So it's stated income. Whatever you state, that's what you make. And all you need to do is make sure that your personal credit and your business is in position. Meaning, when I say your business in position, I mean having your LLC, having your EIN number, having your Dunn Bradstreet registered with a 411, uh, uh, have a business bank account. It's, it's other things, too, to make sure that your, your business structure is in position, along with your personal credit. Let's say your personal credit is 680 to 700, and that's all you need in order to get this money, in order to get the 50 k You don't need any of this up here. Hmm. That's the beauty about business credit. And you're getting a 0% interest rate uh, for 24 months, and it's not showing up your personal credit. This is why I love business credit business funding is so easy to obtain, right? And it helps out small businesses all day long. Just this quarter alone, we did about 300,000. Last year, I did 250, but this year we already, I wanna hit a million dollars. Uh, what I mean by giving small businesses capital so they can have for their uh, for their businesses. So that's the great thing about this concept. Do anyone have any questions about uh, business funding and how does it work, et cetera? Uh, all right, yeah, so you guys can go ahead and unmute yourself if you want, if you have any questions. Um, I just wanted to add to that great presentation, brother. You're the first one to bring a whiteboard on the joint. Yeah. Um, but, you know, ladies and gentlemen, like he's done it for me. You know, it, it's not like I just met him off the street and he said, oh, yeah, I do business credit and credit. No, no, he's done it for me. And mm -hmm. I've seen the results. I've gotten those bags, right? And I'm running with the bags with the dollar sign on there. I got the credit right to where I was able to, you know, you know, bless my wife with a with a nice luxury vehicle because of this guy. This yeah. guy right here <laughs> walked me through it the same way he like I want to give you your roses on, on the real. Like I want to give you your roses right now, bro, because like. Friends like you, they'll, they'll come al along a, a lot. You know what I mean? There's there's a lot of people out there that just want to take, 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 mm -hmm. take. Right, right, and right. he is, I've seen him help so many people access tens of thousands, even hundreds of thousands of dollars, right? Absolutely. And I was like, dude, this is crazy. I was like, when it's, when he's ready to pull the trigger and whatever he decides to do, he's going to have a tribe that's like, we believe in you. Thank you for putting us in this position. Let's go. So for you guys that are actually staying on, I want to salute you guys because here's the thing. With this Notary War Room Live, you guys get to ask questions. You guys get to really, you know, be involved and interact in the situation. By the time the replay hits, you're gone. Do you realize that? Like, you're, you're out of here. They're watching something that you already acted on, started executing, started to apply and even possibly teach another person to move forward in their life. So I want to salute you guys for that. Um, 
And so let me let me do a quick run through. Let me see if I just got this right though. Cool. Person getting the personal credit will allow me to um, qualify for business credit, right? Yes. Once I get the business credit and I start applying for this business credit, I can. They'll give me like credit cards. Is that right? Yes. Yep. Okay. They give you credit cards. Now, once I get these credit cards, my goal is to liquidate these credit cards, mm -hmm. get the cash, and then put it in as an investment. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. That so let me ask you this because I'm a, I'm a little thrown because this is good though. Mm -hmm. What what is the benefit of like? liquidating it and get the cash versus just using the credit card and using it that way that's a good that's very good very good question and let me uh so i'm gonna erase this so prime example i do a real estate example right mm -hmm. so the reason why most of us not invest in the real estate for one we we probably don't have the information and knowledge right so get the information and knowledge to invest in real estate but for two we don't have the capital so to answer tiger question if you have a hundred thousand dollar building that you're looking at, let's say the all in costs a hundred thousand dollars to fix it up, to buy it, to do everything is a hundred thousand dollars. Now okay. the banks are willing to give you 80% on this hundred thousand dollars. So that means they're willing to give you eighty thousand dollars to get a loan, this LTV loan and value, to get a loan for this building. So what does that mean? That means you need to come up with the remaining balance. You need to come up with twenty thousand mm -hmm. dollars, right? That's a 20% down payment. So they want a 20% DP, which equates to $20,000. Where are you going to get the cash from? Mm. This is why most of us, we don't invest into real estate because we don't have the down payment money. But what if I told you, you can use your business credit for the down payment money. Uh. So now let me ask you this. This is a million dollar question. If the bank... Is let's say Chase is giving you a loan for eighty thousand dollars, using business credit for twenty thousand dollars. How much money do you have in a deal? Zero. You have zero money in this deal, so that means you have an infinite return on your investment. You have no risk, no money in the deal. You're using the bank's money, a hundred percent using the bank's money. You guys getting this? You guys, you guys are That's seeing the, the method to this madness. <laughs> that's how you play that game and you only can do this with business credit you can't do it with personal credit because remember if you have a personal credit card it's going to report to your personal credit and they're going to see that you're using it but business credit doesn't report to your personal credit so you had it so you can invest in, into that into that down payment and use that all day long that's why you want to convert that credit into cash wow nobody ever uh, broke it down to me like that no. Yep. That's the name of the game. Who has any questions, ladies and gentlemen? We got to get ready to wrap up real quick. This is this is powerful stuff, bro. Now, let people know how they could. I know Bree just put uh, a lot of the information on how they can reach you. But yeah. uh, let people know what you have going on. What's on the horizon for London Dagens SPP management? Put it out there, brother. So SVP management stands for solving people problems uh, when it comes to credit, right? So I do have a credit restoration company that specializes in repairing, restoring, and rebuilding your credit. So if you don't want, if you don't have the time, or let's say, you know, you don't have the resources and let's say you, you don't want to do it yourself, my company can take over your credit profile and put you in a position to get business funding. But more importantly, we just launched uh, A1 Credit. So we have an A1 credit course, which you can go to and you can, if you want to learn more about business funding, I do a total breakdown on how to obtain business funding. I'll tell you exactly how you put your personal credit in position. I also show you how to put your business in position. You put those two together, you can go to the bank and get the money because at the end of the day, that's the most important thing. How can we get capital? How can we get access to these funds? Well, I'll show you exactly how to do that. A1 Credit Academy. It's in the link. It's only a uh, one-time cost of $87. And uh, it's great value That's on there, true. great content on there. And man, you guys need this funding. So I highly recommend you go to that um, academy and um, get all the knowledge and information you need. What's the website again? Um, A1 Credit. 
So no, Bree, if you could put A1 credit into the chat, please, por favor. We have a question from Ben Brown. Ben Brown, you are live and on the air, baby. You can unmute. Okay, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Okay. All ben right. Brown, to let the people know where you're hailing from, man. What city are you in? Oh, okay, I'm, I'm uh, from Atlanta, Georgia. Sweet. What's going on? Well, um, you talked about the, uh, the the utilization, the um, the percent, and and all that. So, like, let's say you you in a situation where you have, like, for me, I I got um, student loans, um, and I you know I went through a lot of schooling and got you know you got a hundred thousand dollars in student loan debt, um, and then you know some some other debt that's not going to be taken care of any anytime soon. Mm -hmm. How what do you do to um, to kind of offset that and how do you still make that you know uh, make those improvements and gains on your score when you have stuff that legitimately is on your credit report and your credit utilization that, that might not be going away um in the immediate future great question uh man so here's the thing about credit utilization because you have two different types of credit you have revolving credit and you have installment credit give you an example Installment credit, such things that have a fixed principal and a fixed interest rate, such as your mortgage, your student loans, your car loan, your personal loan, and your business loan. So meaning, you know you're going to pay that 350 every single month on your car loan, right? It's not going to change. That's installment. Guess what? Installment doesn't play a part in your credit utilization. It has mm. no factor. So if you $200,000 in debt and student loans, who cares when it comes to your credit utilization? It doesn't matter. Only thing that factor in your credit utilization is the revolving credit, meaning credit cards. Credit cards and lines of credit. Now, there's different types of credit cards. You have your department store credit cards. You have your medical credit cards. You have your charge cards. But only credit cards and line of credit um, factor in your credit utilization. So your credit utilization would not be, uh, your student loans would not affect your uh, your credit utilization. Hmm. So you don't have to worry about if you have excessive student loans and affecting your credit utilization because it's a non-factor. Did I answer your question, Ben? Man, that's that's awesome. I appreciate it. Oh, no problem. And one more one more thing, just to kind of piggyback off of that. What about like stuff that uh, other stuff that's not um, uh, um, installment, but you know, like like maybe some old some old stuff, some old charge offs or something. How how like how do you deal with those kinds of things? Do you just, um, you know, try to negotiate them down or? Uh, so here's the thing, man. If it's already on your credit report, the damage is already done. We will not ask you, we will never ask you to pay anything on your credit report. So for example, I don't care if it's $10. I don't care if it's a hundred, a hundred dollars. I don't care if it's $10,000, right? We will not ask you to pay anything because the damage is already done. All, we, all we're going to do is remove it from your credit report because guess what? Credit is all about perception. Do, do Ben look good on paper, right? Mm -hmm. Do you look good on paper? Just like when you're going for a job, um, you handle your resume. The first thing they yep. make sure, do you look good on paper? Same thing, these lenders, any financial institution, they want to make sure you look good on paper. So all we do is remove that derogatory or negative item, we remove it from your credit report. If they're not trying to sue you, or if that collection agent not trying to sue you, or if it's not reporting in your credit report, who cares? It's getting removed. So that's how we handle that. We're just going to remove off your credit report. Any charge off, any car repossession, anything you have, child support. And the other misconception being is that people think the amount matter. It doesn't matter. You can have a dollar on there. This doesn't take consideration into the algorithm. It matters because it's a charge off or a collection or any derogatory on your credit report. So if this were, even this was $100,000, I get child support all day long between these two numbers, right? Get a remove. Women get mad at me, <laughs> but I get a remove. And now that person is in better position to go get any type of financing for any type of um, um, lender or creditor. You ain't kidding because I got a tollway, the Illinois tollway put something on my credit. It was literally $7.94. I missed it somehow. Yeah. And they put it on my credit report. And it was like this, it, it might as well have been 
seven million dollars. Exactly. Yep. It holds the same weight. It That's holds crazy. The same weight. Yeah. So the balance, the balance doesn't matter. It and you said you said it's about perception, like yeah. Because <laughs> I never heard nobody say that before. So the so it's like the person that's looking to issue out the loan out to you mm -hmm. is looking at the face value of that your report, I guess, your FICO score. Is that is that what you mean when you say perception? Right. So, because here's the thing. Most people think a 700 or most people think like, let's say you have a 730, 720 and you have a credit score, right? Mm -hmm. Most people think this is great. Oh, I have a 730. Let me go get anything I want. Let me go get this house. Let me go get this car. Let me go mm -hmm. get this, um, um, this personal loan, this business loan. But the reality is banks don't care about your score. They care about your credit profile. That's the most important thing because let me break that down really quickly. I can have, if I'm fresh out of college, let's just say you have a, uh, let's just say you have a kid fresh out of college and that, I mean, fresh out of high school and your son decide to go get a credit card, let's say a capital one credit card. He's been paying his monthly payments on time for six months straight. And he looks at his credit report. He has no negative items, meaning he had no collection, no charge off. So his credit was clean, except for that one credit card in good standing. He looks at his credit report. He has a 730 credit score. He like, oh man, I'm about to go to the bank. I'm about to go get this hundred hundred thousand dollars, buy a house, buy a car. I'm about to go do all these things because I got a seven thirty. But the reality is, when you go to uh, now, you probably can get a car out this. That's fine, right? But if you're trying to get personal loans, business loans, business credit, business lines of credit, uh, if you're trying to buy a house and you only got one credit card on there, you think any lender is gonna lend you that type of money? by you only showing that you can manage debt with one credit card. And let's say this credit card is $300. And you got a 730. You think the lender is going to give you $100,000 if you're trying to buy a home? No, because your credit profile is too weak. So on the other hand, I can have a 680 with a strong profile, right? With a strong credit profile and get better terms and get qualified what I want even though your credit score is higher, I get everything that I want with this 680 because my, I have a strong credit profile. So that's the difference between having a strong credit profile and a score. So your score is not, you know, everything. We want to make sure, and this is what we, we help you strengthen up your credit profile. So that's what I mean when I say your credit is all about perception because your credit profile tells a story. So meaning if you had no late payments, Right, no late payments, meaning if you have good credit history, meaning if you have good payment history, et cetera, et cetera, right? All down the line, you have a strong credit profile. So this is what lenders look at, your credit profile, not necessarily your score. Boom, mic drop. Yo, yo, good looking, man. Good looking. You you okay. definitely brung that heat today on this show. I hope you guys got tremendous value from this. Um, check him out or A1 Credit Academy. Um, Bree just put it in the chat section. Uh, what, 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 how else can they get a hold of you, bro? Is it the Instagram as well? Yeah, they can go to um, IG, um, Instagram, SPP Management, S for Sam, P for Paul, P for Paul Management, uh, SPP Manage. I'm sorry, SPP, yeah, SPP Management. They can uh, catch me on IG. Same thing with Facebook. SPP management. I have tons of content on there, tons of value, free value, free content. You can go on there, uh, just check out my videos, uh, anything you want to learn about business funding, business credit, personal credit, et cetera. So it's all on there. Um, you can go to A1 Credit Academy, check that out too. See what's best fits you. We have all different types of programs, but business funding is the, you know, is the, is the Everything. Business fund is everything. We definitely want to make sure we get that for our businesses. Indeed, man. Thank you so much for gracing the, my platform with no your problem. presence, brother. No um, the, the, this show, I mean, my eyes opened up. You you, you made it very simplistic for me, man. And mm -hmm. I hate complicated shit personally. So yeah. I really appreciate you guys. To everybody that tuned in, peace, love, and happiness, and cash flow to you guys. We wish you the very best. Y'all heard? <laughs>